The lesson plan for ages 10 and 11 is similar to the younger ages, but because the students are able to pick which vase they do the mirror image drawing of, um, the second half of the lesson will be very different. But to begin either way, you'll be showing the students images of um, ancient Greek artwork and pottery so they can get an idea about what a mirror image is and then also the I types of designs and colors that the Greeks used in their vases. So once you've looked at that as a class, then you can show the students a few tools that we use as artists when we want to draw something accurately. With a mirror image, it is really important to get it accurate because both sides should be exactly the same. So there's two tools that I'm going to share with you today. One of them is to measure the length of something. So to first look at, we're going to look at this simple straight line that goes from point A to point B. So the students could easily describe that. It's straight, it's horizontal, and you would be able just to eyeball it. But if we wanted to draw it accurately, we would want to measure how far it is from this point to this point. And we're not going to get out a ruler, we're simply going to use what we have on hand to measure. The two things we have on hand is our hand, which is a measuring tool, and then also the pencil, which is our drawing tool. So right now I'm going to insert a simple video that shows how I would use my finger and thumb to measure, and then another option would be how to use a pencil to measure. The first measuring technique is to be using our thumb and um, pointer finger to measure. So for example, I could put my thumb at one point, my finger on the other, and this has now measured the length between these two fingers. So if I held my fingers really still, but picked them up and placed them here, now I can do a mark there. And I know that from this point to this point is now the same from this one to that one. So I'll show you one more time where we measure from here to here, pick it up, place it there and do a mark. So that's using our hand as a measuring tool. And I can measure anything that way. I could say, how far is it from this side of the base to the handle? And I could measure and then do the same thing and say, it's about that width. So anything that we want to go in and check the size of, we would use our thumb on one side, our finger on the other, and then transfer that somewhere else. Um, for example, here to here. In order to do the same thing but using our pencil as a measuring tool, we would simply put our pencil down between the points that we want to measure and I'm going to use my eraser to land on the side of this one. I'm going to use my hand to pinch at this other point. So now I'm measuring between the eraser and this with my finger being the end point. Now I can pick it up and transfer this point here and my finger lands there, and that's where I do my mark. And I'll show you in one other place. Um, so if I wanna know how tall the handle is from point A to point B, I would set down my eraser at one point, pinch the pencil at the other point, and then transfer that to the other side. So now I know that it's from here to here. So now that you have these two tools about how to measure, we get to then place a mark over on this side that shows how long it is from here to here, which is the same from here to here. Then I can easily go in and do my straight lines across that correlate to that. And of course, now I have it very, very accurate. And I can start building upon this um, because if this is good to go, then my next stuff will be more, you know, more accurate and more accurate. Whereas if this is really off, everything will be off. Now, another measuring technique is to use our um, finger to drag across and figure out how high something is or um, the, the placement of it. So if I wanted to know how tall to make my handle, I could place my finger here, drag my finger across, and then place a mark at the same height. So now I know when I do my handle over here, I know exactly how high to make it. And I could just study it and eyeball it, but I could also, in addition to that, use a technique where I am marking it based on what I've found by pulling that across. So we're gonna be consistently using these two tools as we do our mirror image drawing. Um, if I wanted to figure out where this line is, I know that it's simple, it's a curved line, not complicated, but where does it land? 
So I'm going to use the technique of dragging my finger down to figure out where it will go. So if I start here at a point I do know, I can pull the finger down and I know that this mark is a little bit more towards the center of my paper. So I know that this one is here. I could pull my finger down and know that the mark is here more towards the center. So when I do my curved line, I know exactly where to land it and it's an accurate replica of the left hand side. And then when I go in and do the simple lines, I already know where to land them and it's very, very easy to do that. Oops. And so you just go through the different sections and continue drawing it, but using these, tool measure, these two measuring tools as you go in order to either measure the length of something or figure out where one thing is compared to another. So the foot of this, for example, I could drag my finger up and say, oh, it's about, oh, it's exactly the same placement as this mark. And I pulled it down and I said, it's, we'll meet right there. So I could start here, pull my finger down and say this is where the side of the foot goes. So then I can easily go in with my curved lines and get an accurate drawing because I've compared the placement of one thing to the placement of another thing. So showing these to your students and then walking around and helping them individually and allowing them to try it on their own vase that they've chosen to draw. Once they have the vase done, then they can go in and add designs to it. So uh, for example, they wanted to go into a section and add something there um, to the foot of the vase, for example, wherever they want to do that. They can also draw a scene of people or animals or whatever into part of the vase, just like the ancient Greeks would do. They would do a lot of scenes of athletes or people working or of Greeks gods, Greek gods and goddesses um, somewhere on their um, pottery. And then when you color it in, use the very simple color schemes that they would use, such as blacks, red, white, tan, things like that.